Here we go. So everybody listen up. So this is going to be asked on the test, but this is an actually pretty easy part. If you pay attention, it should make sense to you. So um, pull up five dash for the white worksheet. So we learned function operations: f plus g of x, f minus g of x, f times g of x, and f divided by g of x. Now, guys, domain. I'm going to ask you domain. What domain is, is what possible x values can we plug in? Or you could graph the function and look where your function's drawing from left to right. There's two ways of dealing with domain. Now, think about it, guys. The only time we're going to have a domain issue is if we're dividing by a function. Two functions being divided, correct, everybody? Because we can't divide by zero. So that will be the only time we can't plug in certain x value in. Oh, no, not this again. Oh. So everybody, looking at number one on page three, flip to page three, I need you to focus. So page three, we already did number one, f minus g of x was x squared minus 2x plus 2. Did we all get that as our answer? Now our domain, think about it guys, look up here because this should be the easiest thing to not miss. Isn't this a quadratic? Quadratics look like this, correct? So don't they? This is an upward facing quadratic. So isn't it growing left and right forever? So our domain would be all real numbers. Now, once again, the other way of looking at it is, is there any x value we can't plug into this function? Well, no, we're not dividing by anything, so there's no potential to divide by zero. So our domain is, what x values can I plug in? Well, any real number we can plug in. Does everybody understand? Or if you look at the graph, it's growing from left and right forever. So, or you could write negative infinity to positive infinity. Both answers are acceptable. So look at number 3a. You did f plus h of x, you got x squared plus 4x. It's a quadratic. So what's our domain? Yep, all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. There's too many people at pause. Are we confused about something? Okay. Look at number 5a. We have this, f times g of x. So we multiply those out and combine like terms. Even if you didn't, this was the answer. So we have this cubic. Now, are we dividing by anything? No. So we're never going to divide by zero. So we can plug in any number into this function, correct? There's no problem areas. Never going to be undefined. So our domain is all real numbers. If you graph that in the graphing calculator, you can look and see where your function is growing from left and right, and you see it's growing from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now look at 6a. Here we go, looking at 6a. We have this divided by this, f divided by g. Now our domain, well first of all, what we need to do with this, and you will have ones on the test that simplify, is what you're going to do is say, I'm going to see if this simplifies. So don't we factor the top, factor the bottom. So the top factors to be x plus 1, x minus 1, correct? That should be pretty quick for us. And on bottom we have 2x minus 3. Now notice nothing divides out, but before we divide anything out, remember we have to restrict the domain. So this one will have a restriction because we can't divide by 0. So we'd say 2x minus 3 cannot be 0. Now solve for x. So we'd add 3. 2x cannot equal 3. Then we would divide by 2, correct? So we would say our domain is, we can plug in any real number except x cannot equal 3 halves. Because then if we plug in 3 halves, down here we're going to get 0 and that would be undefined. Does everybody understand? So the only time they'll even have a domain restriction, guys, is if you're dividing. Otherwise, it's all real numbers. Okay, let's do 7a. So looking at 7a, there's my answer. G divided by H. Now, what would the domain be? So you say to yourself, well, it didn't simplify because nothing factored. So now I'm going to find my domain. We'd say 1 minus 4x cannot be 0. Solve for x. So we would use algebra to subtract 1. Negative 4x cannot be negative 1. Divide by negative 4. So x cannot be 1 fourth. So our domain on this one would be all real numbers, anything other than x can just not be 1 fourth. But any other number is completely and 100% fine. Yes. Yeah. Good question. Okay, so looking at just a few more examples. So you don't have to write these down, just watch, and then in a minute I'm going to have you practice them on the whiteboard. Now I have the test in hand when I made these, so this is basically a test review. So everybody should be walking. I promise, this is the level you need to be at. So everybody, it says, given that function f of x, given this function g of x, find f divided by g of x in the domain. So just watch this one. So this one's f divided by g, correct? So f is 3x squared minus 3, and we're dividing it by g of x. 6x minus 6. 
Now that is s divided by g, but is that the simplified answer? No. How do we simplify these? Factor, correct? So on top, we're going to factor out a 3. Left will be x squared minus 1, correct? On bottom, we'll factor out a 6. Left is x minus 1. This is the level of the test. Now you'd say to yourself, does the top factor more or does the bottom factor more? That piece factors, correct? So we have a 3, we have x plus 1, we have x minus 1. Now on bottom, we have... 6 and x minus 1. Now remember, before you divide anything out, we've stressed this so much on the last test, we've got to restrict the domain. So our domain is all real numbers except x cannot equal, does 6 have a variable? No. Just 1. Does everybody understand? So domain is x all real numbers except for 1, and now let's write our final answer. 3 and 6 simplify to be 1 over 2, x minus 1 and x minus 1. So our final answer would be 1, no, sorry, x plus 1 on top, correct, over 2. And then we already stated our domain. So you see how you're, the one on the test will simplify as well. So you got to make sure you simplify. Let's do it the other way. Now it's g divided by x. So everybody, is everybody comfortable with me just switching those? So we were here, correct, because we'd want to factor it. So we would have 6, x minus 1 on top, and on bottom we would have a 3, an x plus 1, and an x minus 1. Now let's restrict our domain. All real numbers except x cannot equal negative 1 and 1. Everybody feel good? Now let's divide out exact values. 6 and 3 simplify to be 2 over 1, x minus 1 and x minus 1. So this one's final answer was 2 over x plus 1. We've already restricted the domain. Everybody good? Okay. Then I want you to do this one, and then we'll move on. So show me you can do this one. This is the level of the test. Show me you can do it. This is not on anything, but this is just as good as review as anything. Um, factor. X minus 3 and X plus 2. Now, before you divided anything out, you needed to restrict the domain, right? So all the numbers. Negative 2 and 3. Very good. And then you divided out those. So your final answer is 2 over x minus 3. Good. Got it. That's the level the test will be, so you should feel comfortable in that section of the test. Okay, awesome. Now everybody listen up. We're learning a new operation. This will be on the test. So if you've learned this in the past and it was hard for you, honestly, I'm going to explain it where it's easy. And my students have always been really good at function composition. So everybody, if you need to take a little bit of notes just somewhere on one of those worksheets, you can. Um, we're learning a new operation, and it's one of my favorite ones. So operation just means, so we did multiplication, we did addition and subtraction, and we did division. Now we're learning an additional operation. It's called function composition, um, and it, re it looks like this. So everybody pay attention so that this is easy for you. If you pay attention, it's going to be easy. If you don't, you're going to be like lost. Okay, so this reads f o g of x. Now, the little o is an open circle. Do not mistake that with multiplication. It's an open circle. So f o, it's a little mini o, f o g of x. Well, how that really reads, if we were being technical, it reads like this. Function f composed, that o just means composed of function g. So function f composed of function g. Now, we, anytime we see something written like this, function composition, we're going to rewrite it in this form. f of g of x. f of g of x. Do you see how f is engulfing g of x, everybody? f of g of x. So we're squishing it back in. So let me show you a little trick I used to help me. I always rewrite it like this. So everybody, this is a dumb little trick I use. Picture yourself grabbing x, squishing it back in with g. That's g of x, correct? Guys? And then squishing it back in one more time. So we're taking and squishing it in. So we squish x back in with g. That's g of x. Squish it back in one more time. f of g of x. So there we see how to rewrite it. Now if you understand this, next thing you understand function composition. So everybody watch with me. Given function f of x is equal to x plus 2. If I said to you, find f of 3, what would you do with 3? You, you plug it in for x. So you replaced 3x with 3, correct? So we got 5, correct? You understand that you replaced this x with this 3. So now if I changed it and said what's f of x plus 1, wouldn't you do the same thing? You'd replace x with x plus 1, correct? Just like you did 3, it's no different. 
So instead of an x, there's an x plus 1, correct? x plus 1, and then we still have plus 2, right, everybody? So now let's combine like terms. x plus 3. That's function composition. You just did function composition. You compose function f of this different function g. Does everybody see that? Okay, now look at this. f of x squared. What would we do? When we plug in x squared in for x, replace it? Yes. So that's x squared plus 2. So we can't do anything with that. x squared plus 2. You just did function composition. So if I said f of x squared plus 2, you would replace x with that, correct? So we would have x squared plus 2 plus 2. Is everybody seeing it? If not, you've got to be honest with me. So that would be x squared plus 4. That is function composition. So let's start practicing. Everybody watch. Here's an example. So given function f is this and function g is this, we're going to find f of g of x. So everybody, let's rewrite it the correct way. Squish x back in with g, that's g of x. Is everybody comfortable? Push it back in again, that's f of g of x. Okay, so what are we really looking at here? f of what is g of x? So we're really looking at f of x squared, correct? Does everybody understand up to here? Now don't make this any harder than it was before. Just like in that last example, we said, what's my function f? Add x squared. So go to function f. Instead of an x, there should be a... So that's 3 times x squared minus 2. And now we would simplify. So that's 3x squared minus 2. You just compose function f of, compo of function g. Everybody good? So our domain on that would be all real numbers. Okay, let's do it the other way now. Let's do g of f of x. So squish x back in with f. That's f of x. Squish it back in one more time. So now we're doing g of f of x. So rewrite it. What is f of x? 3x minus 2. So now I say to you, what's my function g at 3x minus 2? Don't you replace that? So instead of x squared, won't it be 3x minus 2 squared, guys? Like this? 3x minus 2 squared. Does everybody see why? Yep. No? Yeah, okay. So now on the test, you will have one of that level. So now is it okay to break the forbidden rule? No. We would rewrite that as 3x minus 2 times 3x minus 2. And then we would double distribute, getting 9x squared minus 6x minus 6x plus 4. And we put it in standard form when we're done. Everybody good? 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. We're not solving. There's no equal sign. Good question. We're just putting it, multiplying it, having it in the most simplified standard form. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. Sweet. So, looking at this one, g o f of x. What we would do is squish x back in with f. That's f of x. Squish it back in again. g of f of x. Now, if that other way, if you don't like that other way, this is another way. This is how I teach it in secondary two. Instead, I teach it like this in secondary two. I just show it differently. We always are plugging in the inside, correct? So I'm going to locate f of x. Isn't this f of x? So I circle it. I'm plugging it into function g, into the other function wherever there's an x. So does everybody see how I point my little arrow to give myself a little hint of exactly where to put it? So then it makes it easy to see, a visual way of seeing it instead of thinking about it. So that's just whatever way you like it. So instead of an x, it's that. So we have this x cubed plus 3x plus 2 minus 3. And now we're going to combine like terms. There's nothing multiplied here. So we just have x cubed plus 3x, and then 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So my domain is all real numbers, correct? There's no problem areas. Do you see how easy this is? Okay, what I want you to do is go for that one. Show me you can do it. Hey, everybody, when you did number 2, you should have had this, right? X minus, you guys are like starting out right, and then your algebra is just bad news bears. Is everybody good up to there, at least? So we have this, x minus 2 times x minus 2. We would never break the forbidden rule, even though half of us did. And then we have minus 4 times x minus 2, correct? So don't we really have x minus 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 2 yeah. multiplication and then minus 4x plus 8, correct? 
So we've got to multiply this out. Whenever we multiply three things, we multiply two. So let's distribute that. Don't draw those arrows in as you go. X times X is X squared. X times negative two. We draw them as we go so we don't forget anything. Minus two X, minus two X, and then plus four. So just that piece was X squared minus four X plus four. Is everybody following? That was still multiplied to X minus two. And then we'll for, ignore that for a second while I distribute that. X cubed minus 4X squared plus 4X minus 2X squared plus 8X minus 8. And then we still have that stuff. Is that anybody lost? So we still have minus 4x plus 8. So then you'll combine all like terms from there. Look up here. There is a way easy way to do this. So watch, because you did it the hard way. I had you practice one by yourself to so you see how to do it both ways. So if you already did number 10, watch how much easier this way is. Watch. Everybody should be watching. This is f of g of 1. We would squish 1 back in with g. Isn't that g of 1, everybody? Push it back in again, f of g of 1. Now what you should do is say, I'm going to do this the easy way. What is my function g of 1? Does that mean what's my function g if I plug in 1? Guys, 1 squared, 1 squared plus 2 is 3. So we're really doing f of 3. So now you're saying what's my function f if I plug in 3, correct? Plug in 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. So our answer is 6. Everybody good? We worked from the inside out. So g of f of negative 2, that'd be g of f of negative 2. So you'd literally say, what's my function f at negative 2? Negative 2 plus 3 is 1, correct? So now I'm doing g of 1. Does everybody understand? So that'd be 3. 1 squared plus 2 is 3. Okay, so just look at this one. f of g of x. Watch, because there, there is one at this level on the homework and on the test. So people get way thrown off by fractions, but you shouldn't. F of G of X, that's really F of G of X. So I locate G of X. Aren't I plugging it into function F wherever there's an X? So that's 2 times 3X minus 3 minus 1 all over 3. So I would distribute the 2, so that would be... 6x minus 3 minus 1, good fix, 6x minus 6 minus 1 over 3. So now we would do 6x minus 7 over 3. Then you say, does it simplify? Well, can I factor out a 3 on top or anything on top? No. So we're done. If it did simplify, we would though. Does everybody understand? Now, g of f of 0, this is the easy one. So that's g of f of 0. So let's plug in 0 into f. So go to f. Plug in 0. 2 times 0 is 0. Negative 1 over 3, correct? So you would be doing g of, and you cannot be afraid of fractions. So that's negative 1 third. Okay, so now you'd say, what's my function g at negative 1 third? You'd go to the function g, plug in negative 1 third. So 3 times negative 1 third. Minus 3. And then you could use your calculator or you could just do it. But if you ever get a decimal as an answer, you'll do math, enter, enter, and do fraction. But this one comes out negative 4. Okay. So last thing I'm going to do here. Watch. Because this one throws people for a loop. And I'll show you how I show it in secondary 2. So we already know how to do this type. G O F of X. But let's say it was F O F of X. So how I teach it in secondary 2 is you're taking F and plugging it back into F. So this is how I have my secondary 2 students write it. Just write out F of X twice. F of X is equal to negative 2X squared plus 3. I have F of X again, same thing, negative 2X squared plus 3. So now we're taking function F, which is that, and we're plugging it back into function F. Does everybody see? So we're plugging it back into itself. So that's negative 2, and then no X. We're plugging in that for x, so negative 2x squared plus 3 squared, correct, plus 3. And then we would simplify it correctly, which I'm not going to take the time to do that, but you would multiply that out twice. Then you'd multiply negative 2 in. You would not put the negative 2 in first, would you? 
because negative 2 is not squared, and then you would add 3. Okay, let's do an easier one. P O G of X. So look at G of X. There's G of X. I'm going to write G of X again. Negative 3X minus 4. We're taking G of X, putting it back into G of X wherever there's an X. So that'd be negative 3 times negative 3X minus 4, right? M minus 4. And we would distribute and combine like times. So everybody see. So if you have this one, if you have G of H of F of 1, don't let 3 things scare you. First, figure out what's F of 1. So if you plug in 1 to function F, that would be negative 2 times 1 squared, which is negative 2 plus 3, which is 1. So we're really doing, we just found that to be 1, so we're doing H of 1. What is H of 1? What's 1 minus 1? 0. So that became 0. So now we're doing G of 0, which is negative 4. So don't let three things ever scare you either. Okay. Awesome. So these are the ones you're going to do. Finish the green worksheet. That one that we took home as homework last time. Yep. Finish all of that and then hand it in. And then start working on the actual test review.